Greetings friends, welcome to this edition of Tales from the Tabletop, the video series where I delve into the deepest dungeons of the internet and my own personal experiences to bring you anecdotes of adventure, from Warhammer to D&D and everything in between. Today's first story is sent to us by a guy named Niall. Niall writes, It was my very first ever campaign with what had developed into my group of friends. I was playing a warlock. We also had a rogue, a fighter, and a barbarian. Over time, we all grew in power and had some cool custom stuff. About halfway through the campaign, my moderately powerful warlock and the rogue accidentally animated a snowman. We made Olaf. The campaign continued for some time and we continued to grow in power. During what would become the final session, we worked our way through a mental hospital, fighting the inmates and the staff. We finally get to the heart of the hospital and find a skeleton wearing a golden crown. Um, fun fact, uh, uh, they're called patients in a mental hospital, not inmates. Like inmates in a mental hospital, that's like, that's like bedlam. That's, that's, uh, that's their patients now. Our greedy rogue ran up to try and steal the crown. Once she got a hold of the crown, the skeleton started to animate. I panicked and threw a meteor storm down on the skeleton's head. Of course, it caught the rogue and the forward members of the party. The members were injured, but the rogue was killed outright, and the skeleton was almost dead. But the real devastating thing, the absolute horrible blow, was when we realized we had gotten Olaf in the meteor storm, melting him to a puddle. I was legitimately upset about his death, mourning and singing dirges at the table until someone pointed out that I was more upset about the death of this snowman than the real player playing the rogue sitting across from me. We all had a good laugh about that, except for the rogue. The group broke up shortly after that and we were never able to get Olaf back. So just as a brief aside, does anybody else find Olaf to be a horrifying character? Like a, a snowman uh, brought to life whose very first wish and desire is to walk into a fire. Uh, Olaf is a creature who was born wanting to die. No one else freaked out by that? I mean, I'm reading this story and I'm like, oh, Olaf's a puddle, sweet, he got what he wanted. Like, it, am, am I alone here? Am I, the only, am I the jerk? I digress. This next story comes from Gavilon the Great. Gavilon writes, it wasn't a game so much as a tournament. I was playing Warhammer Fantasy, the uh, the tabletop war game, not the uh, not the role playing game. I was playing Warhammer Fantasy, and I was in the middle of my golden period. I had a lot of luck back then, and I fluked a few wins. I drew a bloke in round one of a six round event who had played tournaments for a couple of years, but had quite literally never won a game in any of them. The bleeding obvious happened. His shooty army completely blew away my close combat army of Nurgle demons for a major upset win. Thinking that was my chances literally shot away for the weekend, I played the rest of the tourney with a wonderful sense of carefree abandon and just enjoyed the games immensely. As luck would have it, I began an incredible winning streak, which combined with a weekend of mutually assured destruction among the main contenders, saw me back at table one for the final round. I was to play against a very good gamer, and a friend. He owned me for four and a half turns. Uh, for the record, there's six turns in, in this game, so... But after being utterly outgeneraled, the dice gods took pity on me. In the bottom of the fifth, I pulled a series of desperate death or glory maneuvers, and I rolled unbelievably well. My mate watched helpless as the dice literally saw me snatch a win from halfway down the throat of defeat. Come to the presentation, and I was announced as the champion. And before anyone could applaud or heckle or moan, there was one plaintive voice from the back of the room. It was the winner from my first game back in round one. He wailed aloud before the assembled throng. Him? But I beat him! He's easy! The whole hall cracked up. Thing is, that bloke never won another tournament game again. 
And as I've never got the chance to play him again, I am literally the only tournament player he's ever beaten. Gotta love it. This next story is titled, Inattentive Player Tries to Break Every Game and Rage Quits When He Can't. This is more along the lines of a RPG horror story kind of thing. My group had a member at one point who had this bad habit of trying to break every game that he was in. This particular player, let's call him Snuffles, tended to come over to game and he immediately pull out his iPad and start playing a game on it. He tended to not pay attention unless it was his turn, which many of my group are guilty of from time to time. But with Snuffles, it was every game. This could be forgiven, but he'd make characters trying to exploit every loophole in every game he was in. Snuffles apparently felt he needed to ruin everyone's fun in order to aggrandize his own tiny, tiny ego. Some highlights included are... Killing a main NPC during the first session. This was in 2nd edition AD&D. Hey, that's the first version of D&D I ever played. Uh, played when I was a little kid. My older brother was the DM. I still have the books with his name in them. One of our important quest givers was a Gandalf-type character who happened to be a drow. Whilst the NPC was leading us down a long stone staircase, Snuffles started talking to the party about how we can't trust him, and how we should take him out immediately. Before we can come to a consensus on what to do, Snuffles made a stealth attack on the NPC, cutting his hamstring in the attack. The NPC fell down the stairs and our DM decided that the fall had knocked him down to one hit point, and he was unconscious and prone, to which Snuffles walked up and finished him off. We then had no idea what we were supposed to do, and the DM had to rewrite the rest of the campaign. On another occasion, he created an overpowered character to get away with everything. This was in the DC Universe RPG, and Snuffle decided he wanted to play John Constantine with Dr. Fate's helmet. It's been a while since I played the game, but if memory serves, there were two forms of magic in this game, wizardry and sorcery. They worked differently, and one could do what the other could not. Snuffles decided Constantine would be a sorcerer but the helmet gave him wizard powers as well. He also decided to go horny bard on every member of the party, which made everyone uncomfortable. Another time, he was using a power wrong, rage quit because he didn't get his way. This was in another DC game, this time it was the DC Adventure System. Snuffles had picked the variant power set, which allowed him to do multiple power effects, but only one at a time. When he tried to do multiple effects at once, the GM told him that's not how powers worked. This led to a small argument, which ended in Snuffles rage quitting and leaving the group for a while. Another highlight, a DM wanted a heroic campaign, and he argued during character creation. This DM was running a different group, and Snuffles was part of it. The DM wanted heroic characters, and mandated that all the players had to make their alignment some sort of good. Snuffles sat silent for a minute, and finally asked, Can we just agree on not evil? The DM said no, as he knew that Snuffles wanted to do the typical chaotic neutral means I can do whatever I want and nobody can call me a villain. Well, the DM told him no, and he was pouty for the entire campaign. Once, he wanted to run an NPC creed as a game-breaking PC. I was running Hunter the Reckoning game, and he wasn't in, but he wanted to join. He made a basic character for his first session because he was unfamiliar with the system. This went fine, but before the next session, Snuffles told me he wanted to create a Wayward Creed character. In Hunter, Creed is basically your class, and the Wayward Creed is in the GM's guide. They had the ability to control other player characters, causing them to do things they wouldn't normally do. I decided to be tactful when I told him no, giving him the truthful excuse that since the books were out of print and I couldn't get the mechanics of the Creed, I couldn't play one. He told me not to worry because he downloaded the PDF of the book and would tell me everything he could do. Still being tactful, but knowing where he'd go with the character, I told him I'd have to get a copy of the PDF for myself before I could sign off. I run these games episodically so we can go for long periods without running. Fortunately, between sessions, Snuffles got fired, 
and got a new job, which meant our group didn't fit his work schedule. These are just a few of the most prominent events that I can remember with Snuffles. He did more, but I can't remember all of them. I don't game with Snuffles anymore, mostly because of his schedule change, but when he was able to come back, our group put it to a vote as to whether or not to let him come back. Needless to say, it was a landslide victory for no. I have questions about this particular story. I mean, it, it sounds like Snuffles is just clearly that guy. We all know that guy, we've all seen that guy, but here's the question. Why are there so many stories of this guy? I mean, like, I could see two. I could see giving somebody two chances. So he's got that, and then he's got uh, created an overpowered character and uh, tried to break the rules, and then played horny bard and made everybody uncomfortable. It's like, done, done, Snuffles ain't coming back to the table. Why would you keep inviting Snuffles back? I know it seems mean or cruel or even childish to just say to somebody, I don't want to play with you anymore. But if one person is bringing the whole party down, then yeah, it's time for that one person to go. You can let them go politely or impolitely, but you must do it directly. And I recommend doing it quick because after the second time, it's on you. All right, let's balance that out with another sweet one, shall we? This one is from Pro Joshi Zone. Pro, Pro Joshi Zone. Pro Joshi Zone? Pro, this one comes from name that I will not pronounce correctly. And she writes, Two parties making their DM happy in despair. Last year, I officially became a DM for two separate campaigns in the madness of COVID, in a homebrew world that I created. We went on a brief hiatus over the Christmas period and through the start of the new year. When I tried to return, I was met with some obstacles. From personal fears, to imposter syndrome, to players struggling to make sessions. So today I sent out a group message to all my players, asking who was still on board and who wanted to drop out. I even offered to combine or change group compositions if people thought it would help. Honestly, I was expecting loads of people to say they wanted to drop out and be left without about half of my former player base. Within a couple of hours, I'd received responses from almost every single player, stating how they all wanted to continue, with the two players citing new work commitments as reasons for their temporary absences. Everyone was incredibly understanding and reasonable, and even went out of their way to tell me they were looking forward to things starting up again. Amidst this, I also offered my players a chance to reset campaigns, change characters, or do anything else to fix that which they were unhappy with. A couple players wanted to change their characters, but everyone seemed happy with the campaign I'd been running. Some of these people were complete and total strangers to me before the pandemic, so I'm feeling pretty accomplished as a DM knowing that after six weeks without their regularly scheduled shenanigans from me and their companions, they still want to join in what I do, even though some of them barely know me. I feel like I've lifted the DM equivalent of Mjolnir right now. I am still worthy, they still like what I've done, and I still have a pair of parties that I can be proud of. My players are often chaotic, unpredictable, challenging, and creative to a point that leaves me facepalming mid-session. But they make every single session worth DMing, and I'm so happy that they appreciate what I do. I just hope I can continue to give them some sessions worthy of their time." That's real sweet. I, I never get tired of these sweet ones. I never get tired of, of finding joy in something like role-playing games like D&D and then sharing that joy with as many people as you can. And especially the internet is a place that uh, has so many RPG horror stories, and I'm sure I'll be reading some of them here, but it's important to look for the good stories, look for the nice stories, because they exist, and I, I dare say they exist in greater number than the horror stories. The horror stories are just more recorded because, well, because they stick out. And now let's end on a nice funny story to send you off right. This is the one I've been illustrating the whole time, so I hope it was worth the wait and strap in. This story is from Joshua. Joshua writes, I was playing Gurel, an orcish barbarian who had very limited linguistic skills. Typically, his parts in conversation would go along the lines of Good hunt day. Gurel strong. We go. Or 
Water smell no good. He just didn't have the vocabulary in the common speak to be able to communicate on any level of complexity. This changed when we had a random encounter during some overland travel with a creature that I knew had Orcish as their native language. So I had Gurel rush to the front of the group, throw his arms wide, and proclaim in his native langu language, Fair traveler, well met! Come, I shall make fire and share the feast of my many kills, and we shall sing songs of glories of the days gone past. The rest of the players looked at me like I had completely forgotten who I was playing. I shrugged. He's very eloquent in his native language. That last story was my favorite that I had read that week. I was just tickled pink by the entire concept. I could imagine being at that table and, and losing my mind at that, just such a perfectly executed joke. The artwork for this video, I had to think of what kind of orc and what I could do to signify that orc being a barbarian. So uh, instead of having a very ornate helmet or a headdress, I went with one of those top knot things so that I can get some nice little uh, hair flowing down the back. Uh, for the orc style, I went with the uh, Warcraft and Warhammer style of classic green skin, which has now become uh, very, very popular. And it's popular for a reason. It looks cool, and I'm not going to lie, it's super fun to draw. That being said, I do have opinions on uh, how orcs are represented and what, what, what an orc is supposed to represent in stories and in games and what their design is supposed to be like. I am just old enough to remember that orcs were supposed to be these squat, horrible pig-faced looking creatures. Like, that's where the orc tusks come from. They're supposed to look almost like wild boars in the, with a flattened face. Um, and so I look forward to drawing different versions of different kind of orcs in the future. But for here and now, and for the sake of comedy, your classic green skin is definitely the way to go. Uh, to make it uh, more barbarian, I figured that its armor would be more of like a slapdash piecemeal kind of thing. Nicked, cut, uh, busted up, just kind of hanging there. And uh, with, uh, uh, I, I would imagine that the orcs would paint their armor because, you know, the Warhammer orcs think that if you, uh, if you paint in certain colors, it gives you certain powers. So uh, for the first time ever, I tried making distressed paint effect using marker and here's the effect. And I think, I think it's all right. I'm, I'm fairly proud with what I did and I'm, I'm definitely gonna try that again in the near future. If you would like the original art for yourself, it'll be for sale in my store at coffeeandhate.biz. Click on store at the top. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. May your dice roll high and never be cursed.